you know, just some nice little eye stuff um, and so some cool cheeks. Um, so this is that piece there. Uh, what's the, where's this rig from, Ed? Um, you gave me this one. Is, I don't know how to say it. E I S K East Coast. Yeah, East Coast. East Coast. Um, this is a free rig. That the facial puppet, I think, for a um, a free puppet, it was actually pretty decent. Um, it's kind of cool, but um, it has some limitations. But it also has things that not uh, you know, your general face puppet doesn't have. Um, so. It has, um, it actually has some really decent um, uh, lip raises and lower, you know, lower lip depressors and things like that. It could use a bit more chin stuff. I'm sorry if anybody is here who actually made this rig. I'm not tearing it apart. It's uh, for, Constructive uh, feedback. For, a, for a free rig, it's really cool. Um, I think they've done a lot of cool stuff on it. Um, I, I actually, I'm, I'm not super pleased with. Um, oh, that's my thing gone small again. Not super. Uh, okay, great, excellent. Not super pleased with this pose with the teeth, uh, but that's my fault, not the rig's fault. But anyway, I'm actually going to jump to Maya, and we'll just have a look at this guy. Uh, can you see Maya, or how have I shared? Yep, we can see it. Oh, yep, yeah. cool. Nice. Okay, here we go. Um, I might actually show you this rig after too. I'll mush it around a bit and show you things I like. Um, so, my process. You see where my, my mouse cursor is? This is just a technical question. Is there a blue line on your screen? Yeah. What is that? How did I do that? Uh, yeah, it's not in sync sketch because you're not there. Hang anymore. on. Here it is. Must be this. Clear. Clear all drawings. Hey, there you go. Oh, is that in Zoom? That's in Zoom. You can draw in Zoom? That's pretty neat. Apparently so. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> what do we need sync sketch for? We should have just used Zoom the whole time. <laughs> now we know. Now we know. Okay. So, I've... Do, do, do. Just get my brain back into this thing. So, right. Always uh, have a... Uh, always have a face cam and a shot cam when I'm working. Uh, got my face reference in there. So for, uh, at this point, I just I loosely animated the camera so that it seemed um, so it just kind of had the same uh, same feeling uh, in this guy. So that's the camera motion. Um, I'm just going to show you. So I split everything out onto layers. Um, I do like layers. Um, um, the way that um, the way that uh, Weta works in particular, layers for facial is not actually a good idea. So um, this was uh, this was a unique experience to use layers, um, and I would never split anything out to this level either. Um, uh, this is just for purely for demonstration purposes. Um, so. First off, got my camera. Then first thing I've got here is some head motion. And she looks a bit weird and zombie-like. Um, from there, um, that's when I would do my jaw pass. And she didn't do a lot of jaw motion, but there's a little bit of, um, you can just see that there. Take it back. That's, that's my jaw motion in here, and that is just purely jaw motion and nothing else. So even more deranged, I'm sorry. Um, the weird dead eyes. 
<laughs> now like this mannequin mouth bow. Um, but jaw pass. Next thing we would do is a lip pass. Oh God. Oh, that looks horrendous. Okay, going back to frame one, no lips with lips. So here I've um, just neutralized her mouth a little bit like the uh, like the girl in the reference and used a bit of lip tightener to pull them in slightly. Um, and then she has a nice smile. The teeth make more sense when you actually see it. Oh no, the teeth are so big. <laughs> No, I should do another pass. I need to kill the teeth. I know what to do about the teeth. Maybe we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, so here is jaw um, with some lips. And even though the teeth are weird, um, that's nice going through there. All of a sudden, it's, it's a, I'm covering it up on my screen, but you guys can't see that. Um, just doing the uh, the lower part of the face, all of a sudden just with the jaw and a little bit of lips, it's really starting to come alive just like that. Um, next thing I would do is then hit the eye line. Um, and so this is where it truly comes alive. Once you, once you hit an eye line and she starts to look around, there's, there's a lot more appeal going on. Mm -hmm. But that's eyes, no lids. Uh, and then throwing the eyelids on, you know, eyelids, she starts to get some blinks and some squints and things. And all of a sudden she really starts to come to life with the, uh, the eyes and the blinks happening. So a lot more character. Uh, next thing I would do is the brows. She didn't do a lot of stuff with the brows. Um, so essentially, um, I just shaped the brows a little bit. Um, the girl in the video must have had Botox or something because she really didn't uh, didn't move her brows particularly much. Uh, and the last thing is taking the um, the motion from the what was it? I think I took the motion from the lip corners mainly because she um, essentially does a big smile action. And I put that into the cheeks and the, um, so here you can see the difference where there's cheek razor on and cheek razor not on. Um, but essentially, that would be my process of building a facial performance. Now, these hideous teeth, where are they? That's in the lips. Go to, oh, that means I jump out of that. No, oh, no, that's not helping anybody. Well, oh. 2018, man. <laughs> Just puts it all back to nothing. <laughs> I'm back in time. Back in time. Did I have a... I don't know they asked, would you like to see this kind of stuff um, on demo reels? Hell yeah. Oh, man. If you, uh, if you could do... Um, uh, yeah, like basically... Sorry? Like a sharp progression. Uh, I think that's what Kay's asking. Right. If it was... If it was a super cool shot, then yes. If it was something simple like this, um, shot progression may not help all that much. Mm -hmm. um, but um, something on a reel, uh, I would... If you did actually, show, if you showed something that looked, yeah, if you had something on your reel that looked like that, and you had the, uh, you know, the, the the image on the side, that would be cool. I'd show it twice. I'd have it without the image and one with the image, because um, um, 
don't shy away from from using reference and admitting that you use reference because everybody does it and everybody should do it. And if you can illustrate how you can um, how you can match to reference, and if you're using a you know if you're using a um, you know, even if it's your own reference and you're using a, a model or a rig that's not anything like your reference, but you can still see the performance come through. And that's really appealing um, for a studio recruiter. Um, well, actually, that's appealing for a, a studio. Um, I don't know about the recruiters. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I? Oh, that's right. Uh, I want to get the regroup control. Actually, I have no idea where that camera is. I'm just going to change it here to orthographic cam control. Nerves go. So here we go. Nerve services. All right. Now you're you over there. You there. Okay. So I think I grab this guy. I'm just going to do this all again, aren't I? <laughs> Orthographic cam control. I'm sorry, I don't have any uh, hotkeys set up. Actually, That's right. I, never use, I, I, never, I never use hotkeys. I'm too afraid that one day <laughs> I'll have to use default Maya at some point and then uh, say such things. Eh, well, I do pretty much use default mode. I only have one hotkey. What's that? Um, what would that hotkey be? Uh, just framing forward and back. Like one and two. Frame forward, frame back. That's the only hotkey I use ever. All right. Um, mainly because if you're going around, doing, if you're doing rounds and going to other people's, um, other people's desks and you mm -hmm. do something at someone else's computer, you... Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I I don't know how to do anything without a hotkey. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? I want to fix those teeth. I want to grab those guys there. I'm on that right layer. I think it's this guy here. Well, I hope it's that guy there. What don't you want to see on demo reels? Eduardo asks. Shit work, Eduardo. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty simple. Well, I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's not about what you don't want to see. What um, Weta in particular, what Weta wants to see is um, um, creature work. Big creatures and um, um, competent uh, facial work. Um, so creatures in action and mm -hmm. emotional um, uh, facial performances is what Widow wants to see. Um, mm -hmm. um, if you've got some really impressive cycles, uh, but I mean really impressive cycles, um, cool chuck it on at the end of your reel but um that's essentially if you can do really cool creature stuff you would be assumed that you can do cycle work um, um, so i would the perfect reel for me is um is two or three um cool facial performances mm -hmm. and like what i've just shown you here if you could do a face a face that you know, like that, but really nail it. Um, then, to me, that's that's a great facial performance. So, I, to me, oh, this one is there's so much appeal in what's going on in the eyes that um, uh, oh no, his teeth are still killing me. <laughs> she looks like Natalie Portman. She does look a bit like Natalie Portman. Uh, 
I don't know who they base that model on, but um, so what about um, body mechanics? You want to see creatures, facial, uh, human yeah. body mechanics, obviously. Uh, if if it's oh, amazing, God. yes. Yeah. Well, because at Weta is it relying on mocap? That's there's a lot. There's a lot of mocap. So um, human body mechanics we're generally um, pretty sorted for. So um, we're using a lot of mocap to. Um, uh, we're augmenting a lot of mocap, yeah, um, yeah. so we don't have as much of a, uh, a call for human body mechanics, except when there's when yeah you know, stunt work again. Like if you can do, um, if you can show um, parkour style um, stunt work, then that's appealing, because um, if it looks real, um, then you know it's even. Um, there are things that you can't mocap for, a, you know, as far as a stunt performer, because um, there's you have to stunt. Someone's still got to do it, and um, um, yeah, you know, mocap yeah. people die too. Well, <laughs> mocap <laughs> like mo mo performers uh, get hurt too. I think it's so a lot of like um, digi double kind of yeah, a lot of digi double work. Yeah, yeah, um, that's just stuff. Yeah. Like. Um, Okay, here's a scenario for you. So imagine you if you've animated a car driving along and it hits something and it's a convertible and no one's wearing a seatbelt and the car goes whoop. Sorry, the car goes whoop and everybody in the car gets catapulted out of the car. Mm -hmm. If you can make those those dudes in that car or or girls, I'm not I'm not being um, what am I being? Discriminatory. Discri yeah, not discriminating. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just being inclusive. So the guys and girls in the car, you know, get thrown out and they, whoa, and you can animate some amazing physics, you know, people, uh, body physics doing that stuff. Um, and they hit the ground and it looks heavy and you go, oh, you know, that's kind of cool stuff. Um, yeah. Anything that looks heavy and weighty. Um, yeah. Because I, I guess that, okay, so, Maybe things you don't want to see on reels that um, I probably I'll start you know I'll start to skip through a reel if if I see a walk cycle or a run cycle that's just twenty four frames looped of a walk it's like yep yeah, next uh, or it's a run and they're just running straight eh okay next um, but if it's if it's a cycling, um, if it's a, um, you know, if it's a lion and it's running and it's changing speed or it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's chasing something and building speed and it's leaping or, you know, bounding to, uh, bounding to the sides. Like that's the kind of cycle that would appeal. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's more um, more intense, uh, shows a bit more skill, um, speed changes, and even like a you know a horse galloping, and you know skidding to a stop, that's cool. Um, and they don't have to be long. You don't have to be laboring over something that's thirty seconds long. If you've got a hundred frames of pure gold, then just put that on your reel. We don't, you don't need the, um, the extra fluff. Your reel doesn't need to tell a story. It doesn't need to, um, doesn't need to edit together and make sense. Cause, um, if you want, you, you watch a reel and if even if something flashes by and you get to the end of it and it's like, Holy crap, I want to watch that again. And then you'll go back and start to step through it. That's when you're in trouble. When the, when the supervisor starts stepping through your reel, you want to make sure every frame on your reel is gold because <laughs> you'll find the problems pretty quick. <clears throat> uh, that's not to mean, it's not meant to mean uh, uh, that you're looking for problems, not looking for problems on people's reels. It's a, um, uh, actually I prefer to see stuff that's gone wrong in your reel than anything else. Not really. um, okay. L within reason, I mean, like, use it like, okay, I'd rather see personal work uh, that you've done on your own back because that's you directing yourself, and um, we can forgive, um, you know, shitty rigs and um, 
um, things that aren't rendered and uh, uh, you know a little bit of you know some bad skinning and things like that. You can totally forgive all that if the motion's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and because um, can, you can get a reel from um, somebody who's been working in a studio for five years and they've got art directed shots and supervised shots that um, they didn't yeah. necessarily have a lot of say in. Um, yeah, yeah. And so technically you've done the job, yeah. but um, the more appealing thing to um, to me and to us is, um, yes, you want to see studio work. And if you haven't got studio work, then you put a, you, you download a free rig and you do something that you actually enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And like that will come through in your, uh, in your rig or in your, in your reel. Um, because yeah, essentially you want to apply for a job that you're going to want to work on for the next 10, 20 years, right? Not yeah. just do something you think you have to do and then start getting work in that. And then you're just doing that instead of what you really want to do. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, it's good stuff. Like where does not necessarily for everybody, where is definitely is a lot of face, a lot of facial work. And um, uh, the creature work, and it can be quite technical. And um, uh, you could, you know, you can get stuck animating chains for six months, which would suck, but it happens. <laughs> Amazing chains. Uh, eh? Amazing sure. chains. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, Ed, you should come back, man. You should see the, uh, the rope rig we've got now. You'd be amazed. It's, it's only taken. I feel like that's a trap. It's not yeah. a trap at all. It's only, it's only <laughs> it only took about seventeen years for a, for a new one. Um, so yeah. Yeah, chains, and yeah, ropes. it's all chains and ropes. Um, um, what was I saying? Nothing useful, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, good answer and great question. And yes, yeah. and so you know, hey, where does hiring? In January, they're going to have a, have a big, uh, big uh, animation intake of all all levels. So nice. There you uh, go. Take definitely. a course to help you beef up your reel. You know, a course like Griffin Animation Academy. That wasn't even a sales pitch. <laughs> I didn't even know, but, um, <laughs> yeah, you should do that. Beef up your reel. There's still time. Um, yes, there is still time. All right. See, oh, I, I like I like the teeth better already. Um, and essentially, all I all I did was grab the curves on the upper lip and pull them down a little bit. And she has this thing where she bites her lip in the reference. I may have gone a bit too bit too far with that. Um, Would you ever move the teeth? As no. in, like, no. Because that's no. going off model and going off the... Yeah, my, my teeth don't move. So yeah. I'm, you know, I'm not going to move her teeth. Um, I'm going to cheat it. No. Nah. No. Mm -hmm. Things that things that are bone, if you're trying to cheat things that are bone, you've, you've done it. something wrong. Yeah. But it's potential. It's as simple as... Like, generally, when eyes don't work in a close-up, something like, uh, like this, it's... Um, or if the, the eyes or the brows don't work, it's actually more to do with maybe your head angle slightly wrong. Because especially if they're um, using a uh, uh, a wide angle lens, it's really difficult to um, mm -hmm. you know hit that on point. Um, if you're doing a but if you're doing a close up with a wide angle lens, you you should fire your DOP because <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, that's another tip. If you're going to do a facial shot, put it on a, um, a, 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 a like a 50 mil lens at, at least. 85 is good because yeah. um, it just tends to flatten out the features a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's much more appealing because uh, uh, you know in portrait photography, I usually use like a 200 mil lens, um, which really flattens stuff out quite nicely. But um, Nice. Uh, I think this is an 85 that I put on here. Um, yes, yeah, so for, for dialogue pieces, yeah, 85. 
dialogue pieces, at least a 50 mil, 85 is a nice portrait lens, um, 200 might be pushing it, um, yeah, there. I'd say, yeah, longer lens for facial pieces. It tends to be more flattering, flattering. Um, so that's the other thing, um, with cameras, for your reel, don't neglect the camera um, in your reel because the camera is just another is another character and like a lot of good um, camera motion and it's like subtle camera motion. Mm -hmm. You don't want to you don't want to overdo it. Uh, it can really add a lot of impact to um, to your reel shots. Um, yep, that's uh, something I teach in my course. So students, if you're listening, referencing cameras. There you go. See, I, th I threw you that one in. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Cameras, man. Didn't even uh, rehearse that one. That one nah. perfectly set up. Got that one for free. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are no freebies in this world. Oh, don't I know it? Um, cool. Any, any, any thoughts? Queries? Questions? Uh, there is um, another question from Eric. Um, it's about. Um, so what do you guys feel will happen with machine learning and AI revolutionizing a lot of stuff, making it faster, easier to do everything? Yep. Will we have our jobs cut down by the machine or could it be great? Uh, I think it could be great because um, as and Weta is actively working on machine learning and deep learning um, and it is really cool. And the things that it is actually really good for is, um, um, uh, real-time compositing and things like that. Um, cool. It's, uh, like just, yeah. Fake or whatever stuff. Oh uh, yeah. Stuff like kind of, like, not necessarily deep fake, um, but the like real-time compositing for, um, uh, for, so, uh, directors can visualize their shots when they're using uh, uh, virtual production stuff. Yeah, that's um, great. It's really cool for that. So you're getting, you know, AI can cut out people and composite digi backgrounds behind them um, oh, in the plates so that when you're doing mocap, you can have your mocap characters interacting with the, um, uh, you know, plate performers and stuff like in real time. That stuff's really cool. Um, and also it's really useful for um, doing like auto generating roto plates. Like when you get into AI, like AI is amazing for that stuff. And I know your question is about deep fake and AI for uh, performance capture and um, creating performances. Um, but uh, I currently what AI is really good for is that sort of comp work stuff. Um, and what it is kind of looks like it's good for, it can be good for performance stuff, except the reason where our jobs will continue to to thrive is because the computer doesn't actually know like a computer is guessing what emotions are it doesn't actually know like it still needs input from a from a user to say you know to say yes that's the right performance choice um so it's that can you know ai still needs to be directed because what's ai making is ai going to be making movies for AI or is it making it for us? So I don't know. At the moment, it still needs to be. Um, it's a good question. It's yeah, it is. A, it's a loaded question too. Uh, it it still needs to be um, directed. It needs to be given a hand. So it. At the moment, we're still cool. Because mm. yeah, we still have to tell it what to do. Um, but hey, it'd be great eventually if I don't have to sit there in the graph editor for too long. If it's just essentially gives me two options it's like which one's better it's like huh that one that'd be great yeah, yeah, yeah. um, um, um dragana asks how much time do you usually get for a shot and how much does an animator really do and how much uh his arms tied from supervisors leads clients coffee cook <laughs> coffee cook how right. much time per shot uh, it can vary it varies a lot um So, depending on the shot, you could get, it's very rare that you'll get a day for a shot, unless it's like, um, 
an arrow flowing through a throat and going through a shot or something like that. Um, essentially, you would have you know, three or four shots at once, and each of those shots may have you may have five days to complete each of those shots, but that five days gets spread out over three or four weeks because you're kind of you might touch that shot for half a day, but then your other three or four shots that you're working on, you also need to hit for dailies the next day. So you might do half a day on your four shots in a block and then have that all submitted for dailies, get notes, and you do another half a day on each shot. So essentially you've, you've used, um, you know, in one week, you've used one shot of budget, you know, one shot of your um, animated budget on, um, on one shot but you've worked on four shots that week. So um, you might have the shot four weeks, but you actually you really only work on it for four or five days out of those weeks. Um, and it's not like you want to try and use, it's not like you want to use your, um, your four or five day budget on your shot before you show your supervisor or before you send it for, um, you know, send it to the client for blocking. You want to be, you want to try and get your blocking pass in that first day um, and sent to the client because the clients get that's that four or five days of um, of budgeting is going to include client changes and notes and you know dailies and rounds notes and things like that so um, uh, yeah it's not it's not the same well how we work is not the same process as you need to hit a certain amount of frames, um, uh, you know, a certain amount of seconds in a week. It's not, um, mm. it's not that process. Um, it's every shot is looked at on its merits to say, well, that's a big ass shot. That's going to take 12 days. And then that shot could take three months to get approved. Um, but it won't be the only shot you work on. Um, uh, I don't know. That's a, a varied question. Mm. Um, but that, yeah, that, I think that answers it there. Like it's just essentially spread out. You get your uh, bid days on it and it's just spread out. <laughs> you yeah. don't do it all in one week or no. in five days. Yeah. Well, sometimes you do. If you... <laughs> sometimes you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the end of a project, it's generally, hey, look, there's six new... This shot was bid for six days, but we've only got two. So, you know, just whatever you can do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get it out. It's, it's a, it, we're just going to internally approve this one. Just, 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 yeah. Just, just publish. Just publish. We're, we're done. Uh, <laughs> that always happens. Um, ben Mars asks, what number of controls do you have on the face rigs with the main controls? Um, and do you then have sub controls per muscle? Essentially, hi Ben Mars. Um, uh, have you still got the hair, man? Don't tell me. Don't tell me the hair's gone. Um, uh, I'll be disappointed. Damn. Yeah. Um, um, how many controls? Uh, hundreds. Oh, hi Ben. Sure. No hair? Oh, yes. Still there. Awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Is it yeah. touching the ground? Oh, Jesus. That is... You've got a, you've got a sickness, my friend. Um, uh, controls. There's a lot. On, uh, on our face rig in particular, uh... I'd be frightened to think about how many controls are on there. Um, uh, I'd say there is probably about, there's probably a, at least 60, 60 uh, sliders in our channel box for um, our face rings. Um, and it tends to grow rather than shrink um, as you find that you need more shapes. Um, and To say there's primary controls and sub controls, there's um, essentially there are your primary controls, which aren't actually that many. So your primary controls, what would that be? 
just trying to think. Your primary controls would be your jaw, lip raise, upper lip raise, chin raise. Okay. Stretch. Corner depressive. Corner puller. All right. So just for the mouth, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight controls that I would consider are the primary ones, except there's two of those, there's two of those. Oh, I forgot one, the lower lip depressor, lower depressor. Um, there's two of those, there's four of those, there's four of those, there's two of those, there's two of those, there's two of those, okay. Two, four, six, 10, 14, 16, 18, 20. So there's 21, essentially 21 primary controllers for us just to get the base um, face situation. And no, there's not, we, I wouldn't call them um, sub controls for each in extra muscle. But um, there's again, like there's at least, you know, double that, triple that for all the extra pieces to move the rest of all these little face pieces around. Um, and they're not necessarily grouped by muscles. Um, they're grouped in more sort of um, uh, areas and what they, what they achieve rather than what they, um, what they, what they drive. So your yeah, zygomatic, which is the thing that pulls your lip corner. That's literally just called corner puller. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but there's corner puller and then there's sharp lip corner puller, which is the, because you've got two big tendons, one running down there and one running just sort of over your cheekbone there and one pulls it straight up and the other one pulls it more to the side. Um, uh, but when on top of that, our rigs also then have a, um, a, 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 a bone system so you can turn on actual on face controllers, but that's more to do with um, if you're doing tactile things. Um, um, you generally don't want to get into that, especially on our rigs. But um, yeah, too much, too many. Mm. <laughs> uh, Eric has a question for you. He's going to jump on a webcam. Oh wait, you're on mute. Hold on. Oh, un unmute, Eric. Hello, are you hear me? Hi. Yeah, man. Uh, my question is, um, when people uh, want to uh, get something in their face uh, that they can't get with the rig, do they tend to go to riggers first for solutions, or do they uh, also use uh, make their own blend shapes, deformers, things like that? Are there rules about that? How do how do you guys approach sure. that? Um, specifically for Weta? Uh, um, no, the uh, the facial models team are a um, are a beautiful little kept group of people that um, only um, you know a precious few have um, access to so if there's a face shape that you really need that you can't get it's you've got to go to your lead or to the soup and then the soup has to then um, you know go the next level up to the facial models department or go to the VFX soup and make a case for this is why we're going to go back into the face uh, the face rig and make a change um, because generally little changes well, it might seem like a little change but um, you can have big knock-on effects um, and the knock-on effects you know it can generally just cost a lot of money because if you then if the face models um, already been approved but you need to change the base shape all of a sudden all the shapes associated with the face need to be tweaked so that's the modeler's time and then the uh, 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 riggers then need to integrate that again and uh, it can create more issues. And every time you rebuild it, it can is a possibility of introducing errors. Um, so, 
yeah, it's not something light, um, not something that's lightly undertaken to change a face shape. Um, but yeah, early on in the proof in the process before it's all locked down, it's cool. We can get, do whatever you want, <laughs> <laughs> or we can ask for whatever we want, um, and everyone's happy to do that. But there's a point where it all gets locked off. Um, having said that, ooh, is it, this isn't this isn't public, is it? Ed? I can say weird shit about the leader. No, no, I can't say that. Well, it's recorded. Um, oh, okay. Don't it's, worry it's about it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, the uh, on um, on uh, Battle Angel, there was a lot of face changes, a lot of face changes right up to the last moment, a lot. Mm. Again, not going to say too much about that. Though. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Eric. Um, there's oh, another. Question. Hang on, I don't think I finished answering the, the question before. Not the Ben Mars one, the one before that. Um, oh, how much? How much uh, the the supervisor thing? How much uh, if you're working on a shot? How much if you're an animator? How uh, how much uh, are your hands tied uh, uh, yeah, by the suit? Um, yeah, in the studio system, a lot. Um, yeah, there's not a huge amount of freedom, but that's mainly because you are being given a um, you're being given a shot with a template, and that template has been hanging out there, and a director is knows. Well, hopefully your director knows what they want. Your director is um, pretty um, set on a particular thing, and that's what you, as an animator, are trying to are striving for. Um, and within that framework of here's here's my shot, and here's my goal. I need to get from A to B, and my story point is C. Um, within that framework, there is a there's a bit of wiggle, big a bit of wiggle room for. Um, for animators input, but there's also, uh, you know, there's only so many ways you can skin a cat. And if you've got a shot and uh, you've essentially, and if you've got reference that if, of a performer, and if you've got facial reference, you pretty much just need to hit the facial reference. Um, uh, the, actually one for a, a movie like, um, like for like Avatar, there, there is no, no room for input. James Cameron knows exactly what he wants, um, and if he doesn't get it, that's when he gets a bit grumpy, um, or oh, it gets very particular. Uh, and for Matt Reeves on the Apes film, again, super particular, knows exactly what he wants. He's mm. already shot the movie, and where you're essentially just recreating it for him. Yeah. And if he's not reading the emotion, he'll tell you and tell you exactly why. And you are moving pixels that you don't quite even understand why you're moving pixels until until he feels it. Um, uh, and but with something like uh, Umbrella Academy, that was probably the first time as a supervisor that we had a whole range of freedom because they had a they had an onset performer that they didn't um, that they weren't super in love with his his body performance um and he read the lines for the actors on set and they had a um and then they had a, a voice performer who recorded the lines some months after they had shot principal photography and his line read didn't match up with the body performance um most of the time so then we were essentially recreating the body motion on our motion capture stage um, while trying to embody the the presence of the the dialogue performance and mm -hmm. um, just had all sorts of crazy freedom and the the um, the, sh the on in TV land the showrunner is the director and the showrunner just kind of loved it and it was super cool yeah. heaps of freedom could nice. essentially do what we want as long as the story came came across. I've um, heard that with Netflix. There's a lot yeah. of creative freedom on all projects. So mm. It's very appealing for like, or artists like actors, directors, even VFX. Yeah. More freedom. Yes. Hey, yeah. Way more freedom as long as you're getting the point across. They, yeah. um, they're not too worried about the process and how you got there, um, which is super cool. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully that answers your question. 
Yeah, yeah, it does. Cheers. So what kind of shots do junior animators usually get at Weta? Chains. <laughs> well, at least it's... <laughs> at least you get a good drink now. <laughs> no, that's not it. Uh, junior animators, uh, uh, it depends what the show is. And uh, as a junior animator, that's not necessarily, you're not necessarily pigeonholed in to um, only ever being a junior animator and only getting, um, you know, rubbish shots and things like that. Um, it's definitely merit-based. You might start as a junior animator and you might be doing, you know, ear motion on, um, you know, some flicking ears on, you know, on, a, on a cheater or something. Um, or you might be uh, you might be animating a lot of arrows, but um, everybody will be given it. Everyone gets a shot to do something a little bit more interesting, and you really you really need to take your chances when they when they come up. And because um, if you're a junior animator and all of a sudden you've done a, a a cool little run cycle on a deer in a background or something, people notice that stuff and it's like, oh, yeah, that. Do you remember that that dude last week who did that little deer? Yeah, we should give him something harder. Yeah, or um, yeah, that kind of stuff. As a junior animator, you're not always pigeonholed into doing match moves. I mean, God damn it, I'm a supervisor and I, I pretty much do match moves and nothing else. <laughs> that's actually that's the circle of life. You start as a junior and you're doing match moves and arrows, and then you become a mid and you're doing dragons and um, um, Orcs and stuff, and you know, really cool stuff. And you become a senior, and you're doing all the hero money shots, and then you become a lead, and it starts to come down, and you're it's technical, you're <laughs> doing all the tech stuff. You're fixing people's cameras, and um, um, just essentially, um, you know, dealing with people's problems. And then you become a soup, and you're back to arrows and uh, match moves. So you know. It's, a, it's it's the full gamut of oh. <laughs> <coughs> so um, you know essentially you know juniors do the same as soups so you know there's nothing wrong with that yeah um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the last three questions I reckon because we're gonna let you go at some point it's already been two hours oh, so God. if anyone has except why my face is except why my face is red yeah 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 you're looking thirsty yeah. arched. Oh, oh, give me a glass of water. So anyone with...